Okay, I think we can start. Uh, am I audible, guys? Please let me know. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining this live. I hope you are all having a good evening. And it's almost a weekend mode, so you must be in the weekend mode. I, uh, you know, Zoom. Um, so yeah, I think uh, firstly, thank you so much for joining this live. Uh, I'm Tanvi, and I. Um, you know, work at Vera as a nutritionist and care manager. I have more than five years of experience in this field. I've done my masters in nutrition and dietetics, and I've helped hundred plus women to achieve healthy, sustainable habits. You know, and as a nutritionist, I believe it's very important to have that positive relationship with the food. Ah, uh, so we at Vera, you know, we try to do that. Um, along with, um, you know, providing high quality, you know, um, uh, and Uh, compliance and you know compassionate care to you know our uh, you know to, to our patients to women basically uh, this is a platform where um, you know women you know can share uh, their thoughts they can share their issues and we can help them out so this is a judgment free you know platform all our team members um, you know they're just going to help you out and there are going to be no judgments at all um, and then also um, you know we um, you know as a team You know, we work on you know scientific backed, evidence based treatment where we help women to achieve their you know health goals. So this is what we do at Vera. Um, you know, we also work on basically habit building program where we try to build those habits. And we believe that it's very important to um you know give the time it requires. So at least like twelve to fifteen months is what we you know want to. You know, give in order to see those changes because we believe that health is a part of a life, and we want to make it actually, and that's what we work on, right? So this is what we do at Vera, and um, you know, yesterday we had put up a story, um, you know, for our followers to ask questions related to nutrition and PCOS. So here we are uh, today. Um, I'm going to answer a few of them. So, uh, you know, uh, let me just you know start with the um you know questions. So uh, the most a uh, common question was um, you know asked was that you know how what type of food intake we should be you know having right so uh when it comes to you know pcos um, there is no ideal food intake as such we want to focus on managing uh, your pcos by giving all the balanced nutrients uh, so we want to work on balanced nutrition we want to work on balanced meals because you know nutrition plays an important role so working on um, adding you know proteins um you know uh zinc vitamin b12 um you know omega 3 fatty acids um you know and etc so we just work on basically balancing our meals and that's what is important right so uh when we are balancing your uh, our meals at the same time we also focus on uh making your treatment more you know customized so uh it's more focused towards what's your requirement and um you know what all you know would you you know need ads for you know your situation condition right so it is customized um and focuses on more balanced meals and when you balancing your meals when you're focusing on adding more of nutrients definitely not one particular food is going to help you you know see those changes in your um you know body but um uh, it is the lifestyle change as well that is going to help you see those changes right so it is a holistic approach so we work on the five pillars which is you know diet exercise consistency sleep stress management and together um you know when you're working on it uh you will also be able to you know conceive and you know improve your fertility because that was the second question that you know any particular food that can actually you know improve your fertility so as i said there's no particular food but it is going to be you know adding more of nutrients and balancing your meals and um, you know making sure that your body is getting you know what it requires and that is definitely going to help you conceive and uh my patients um you know with the uh, lifestyle modifications have seen good results they have conceived a few of them are going to deliver soon so definitely this is a magic of you know adding nutrients because we um you know focus on the requirement and we add different nutrients different food groups because all the food groups needs to be included in the diet and that's what we do and that's how it's going to help you achieve targets and this is all science based research based evidence backed and that's what we do um coming to the next uh you know question that uh was asked was that you know 
is the soy products you know dec- recommended or can we include them so as i said that uh, you know we want to include proteins in our diet and uh, as i said that we will be including our proteins by making sure that your requirement is fulfilled so uh, if you are a vegetarian then definitely uh, you know to some extent it becomes difficult to get you know uh, proteins so you can include um, you know soy or you could include soy products like tofu but again it should be focused on uh you know uh making sure that if there is any other underlying condition like thyroid then we are avoiding that right so it's absolutely okay to include soy based products we do include it in our diet plans as well but it is definitely going to be in moderation and uh you know we are not uh going to give it unless the, we are going to gi- uh, not give it if there is any underlying condition like thyroid okay so it is safe to use but you sh- because we want to complete the protein requirement but we still want to make sure that we are including it in moderation and go for other um, you know uh, food uh, sources as well like you know dals or you could have paneer or you could have um, you know pulses etc uh, another question related to the proteins was that you know can egg whites be included into the diet so yes definitely um, you know egg whites are a very good source of protein but at the same time uh, you know if you're including whole egg as well that's also fine because um, you know it is going to be a complete protein for you so uh, unless um, you know we're including too much of fat or you know there are some underlying condition we restrict it to some extent but otherwise you know uh, including egg whites or including whole eggs uh, you know is absolutely uh, you know important and you could include that and they are good for our body as well uh, and then coming to the next set of question was that um, can i have chocolate uh, or is it good you know to include chocolate in the you know uh, our diet so yes definitely unless uh, you know you're having um, you know 90 by 90% of dark chocolate it's it's okay to you know use that uh, we also give to our patients at time because it's a very good source of zinc uh, and at the same time you know it helps to curb sugar craving so when it comes to you know pcos uh there is insulin resistance where your body is producing insulin but it is not being able to utilize it and you know that can lead to sugar craving so you know at times we do add like a piece of dark chocolate again everything has to be in moderation so we do add it like twice in a week for a patient so you know yes it's okay to add dark chocolate which is more than 95 you know 90% darker uh but yeah again it has to be in moderation um and then another question um asked was that you know how to start a day you know uh, like what what should be like the early morning drink so uh it's very uh, important to have uh, something in the morning because you know it's going to help help you you know curb your hunger right so starting your day with some uh you know warm water um and some nuts and seeds is always going to be good so that you're feeling full um and then um you know it is also helping you control your blood glucose level so definitely adding good fats you can start with some chia seeds or you can have like soaked almonds along with a glass of lemon water and that's how you can start your day with um uh, also another question asked was and i think uh, this question is asked for many uh, of my patients as well that you know should we consume milk or uh, we should not consume milk and then if i'm not consume milk then what should i be you know uh, including so uh, yes again you know the reason why we avoid milk is because uh, you know it can lead to inflammation because of the you know injections or hormonal injections that are given to the cow right so that is the reason why um, you know we avoid milk but otherwise if you're not and also to into you know for the patients who are like lactose intolerance or you know have a lot of bloating or gas issues we do avoid milk for them uh, but unless if you're not having those issues a little bit of milk again say 100 ml to 150 ml could be consumed uh, you know in the diet and and if you're not including milk right into the diet then uh, you know the alternatives could be you know say almond milk or you know soy milk or you know coconut milk but again uh, you know adding these milks or uh, milk sources or like adding these alternatives uh, should be in moderation and you should consult a nutritionist before that because um, you know they also have a lot of fats in it so you know the ratio you know we always focus on the 
you know managing or having a proper ratio of the micros so if if that is something that uh, you know your nutritionist is able to do and um, you know help you with you know understanding your micros properly then definitely you can include it but just um, you know because everybody says that have almond milk have soy milk you know or have um, you know coconut milk it just shouldn't be consumed blindly but make sure that it's it's proper you know it's like in or in moderation okay uh so um you know one of the most common questions you know i have come across where patients ask me a lot is that uh, you know should we like you know you know avoid gluten or you know like should we include gluten so uh again uh when it comes to gluten right so if you are lack if you're like you know gluten sensitive or if you like you have celiac disease then definitely you want to avoid gluten because otherwise it's going to cause problems but if you are okay with um you know digesting it um you know if there's not causing any uh, issues then you can definitely include gluten uh you know in a form of say roti or you know some upmas or something like suji ka upma or anything and you can always mix it with something else uh so some like multigrain um you know so you could add like say oats flour or some you know millet flour or something and just mix it together and have that so that it helps you you know to increase more of fiber as well so yeah definitely you can include gluten and uh but again it should be in moderation and unless you have any uh conditions it should be avoided uh so i'm just going to take like one last question um you know from from the you know i can see a lot of questions actually so i'm just going to try and answer one more question before we end this session uh just give me a moment guys okay do you have any questions i just can't see if anybody wants to ask any question please ask okay very skeptical after having tried multiple docs and forms of medicine why why do you endorse vira okay uh so you know when it comes to uh, medication uh you know it is just to support uh, as i said that you know when it comes to pcos the management is the only way it cannot be completely you know um reversed but it can only be managed so uh we at vera we try to you know work on the holistic approach right so medication is just to support but the holistic approach is very very important because it's like diabetes and hypertension where we are trying to you know if if we are taking medication we still have to like manage it with what we are eating what nutrients are we eating are we sleeping properly are we getting into the physical exercise are we you know able to manage our stress right so all these factors will also impact how you feeling right hence uh, apart from the doctor's support a nutritionist support a care manager support is very important so that we are able to see those changes so it is always a balance of both the things and the medication or the you know doctor support is required and it is to support you till the time your body is getting used to it right hence it has to be a combination of you know the medication and time and holistic approach that is going to help you see those changes i'll just take one last question guys if you have any uh can whey protein be taken uh okay so yes uh you know if uh your the basically the protein supplement should be taken only if your body is able to uh, you know if you're not like able to you know complete your protein requirement right so uh in case if you're not able to complete your requirement we can always uh, you know take some supplement but again uh you know if you're going for whey make sure that you are uh, asking your um, you know nutritionist about it because at times you know it can uh, because you know whey is again the by product of milk based product so if you know if you have any issues digesting milk it could also cause a problem hence uh, you know just ask your uh, nutritionist and make sure that uh, you know you are aware about how much protein you are including in the diet and that's how um, you know you could take whey otherwise other alternatives could also be like including you know plant based proteins uh, which is also going to be good for your body to you know support the additional nutrient requirement okay guys so i think this is it um it was so much fun answering these questions and um you know thank you so much you know for joining this live session um i hope you all have a good evening and i would look look forward to you know answer more questions and you know have a more have more such live sessions so thank you so much guys you have a good evening and let's connect soon